Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to Ancestors Legacy, a tutorial for people who are very new to the game. Um, first of all I just want to say, uh, with the leaderboards right now I am currently second place so I know what I'm talking about. You can trust me when I give all this advice. This is going to be a very basic video going over the basics of how to play um, and giving advice to new players. Uh, but, you know, all are welcome if you want to try and learn something new. I will be doing more tutorial things in the, like this in the future, uh, which will go further in depth, but this is a very, a very basic one. So first of all, I'm going to, I'm just going to try and teach some people how to play and talk about the basics of this game. Okay. I advise that for your first games, you do one versus ones. Um, you know, actually, do do whatever you want. You can do two versus twos or three versus threes. Um, I I advise three. What? Uh, yeah. I advise two versus twos, and this is just the map I'm going to show you. Right, so I'm going to play against the easy AI. Um, the only reason for that is just to be able to like show you, uh, like what. To show you as much as possible without me having to, like, stress over trying to win. First of all, you want to pick your faction. Now, for a new player, I highly advise that you go for either the Vikings or the Slavs. Um, or possibly the Germans. I'm going to go for the Slavs, uh, because they're my favourite one to play right now. And I'll just fight the Slavs as well. So, yeah, let's go. Lesson 1. This is not an Age of Empires reskin. That's my lesson 1. I see lots of people play this as if it's Age of Empires, which it is not. Okay, this is your starting base. You start with one town hall and three towers. You don't want to lose your base, but you also don't want to play too defensively. This game, it favours being aggressive a lot more than being defensive, although you can be aggressive and defensive as well. So, all buildings are free place, so you don't have to worry about place, where to place your barracks, right? These are your buildings. Uh, you can like find them all here as well, so F2 will be your units, F4 is your uh, buildings, and F5 is your technologies. Uh, you can also like find buildings by clicking on this as well, but I prefer this. So, here are a house. Here is a house, I should say. Houses increase population like they do in all games. One house means you can have one extra squad. You can see here the house symbol. I currently have one squad and three um, squads that have a maximum I can build. If I build a house, then this will eventually go to far once it is built. Um, as, and as you saw, I couldn't choose where to place my house, um, it was auto say it had to go there. Now if I want to build a barracks to get some soldiers out, I click on the barracks, obviously, and it has to go there. You can't build a barracks here, you can't build it here, you can't build it here, you just click on the building and it builds in its pre-allocated location. Uh, and then you just wait for it to build. As you can see the house has been built, so now I can have four people. Uh, so I've got one out of four. Shield, listen. Right, this is your first unit. Um, very good unit. Um, if you zoom in too much, you can actually see it in uh, quite a good way as well, and you can zoom out again to, uh, yeah, zoom out. This here is everything you can do. This is defensive formation. Defensive formation makes you move very slowly. Uh, but of course it's, it gives you a slight defensive boost, so that's good. Keep your this button here allows you to retreat, so that you retreat Hold back down. to where your barracks is. Uh, press it once to, to retreat back, or you can press it twice to retreat all the way back. And this is your disband button, uh, which is fairly simple, you know, you delete your unit. Everything else, um, you know, get, get used to these in your own time. Um, I think will be the best thing to say. Um, I won't go through everything right now. It's only for the very basics. So, 
Yeah, and I've built my barracks and I can now train more swordsmen if I want to. So I'm going to train a swordsman and then place it here. You know, it's like the same usual uh, thing in games where you set a, a rally to location. You just press right somewhere whilst holding on the building and that's where we go. And as you can see, I now have two out of four because I have, once it arrives, the second squad. That's the very basic stun. The purpose of this game is to take villages, such as these. There's a village here, uh, there's one here, one in the middle, one here, and one all the way back here. It's this centrepiece here. I'm going to take this village. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to send a unit over to the village. And I'm going to right click on the village so that the unit can attack it. Um, I also advise that when you play Slavs, this is only for Slavs, raise the shields. Right, so as you can see, as you lose units, um, their, their health goes down. Um, because of course the village is shooting at them, but you're shooting at it, and you can see the village hitbox going down as well. So let's just burn this. It's actually snowing right now. Um, the weather does impact the game quite a bit. If it's snowing, you burn buildings down slower because it's like putting out the fire. Same if it's raining as well. Uh, so be careful of the weather sometimes. In most games, you should have taken this village about five minutes ago, but of course I'm showing you that as an example. Okay, so you've taken this village now, and as you can see, you're capturing it. Um, capturing villages, it's you've just got to have a unit in this circle here um, as you capture it. As you can see, it's night time as well, so you can press this button here to turn on your torches, and the village is captured. So if you turn on the torch, it means you have increased vision, as if it was like daylight. But when your torches are on, that means the enemy can see where you are. As you can see here, this is their limited field of, field of vision. Turn on the torches, and you can see further. But that means they can see you as well, so you gotta be, gotta be careful. I'll leave it on for now. Okay, so I've captured a village, as you can see. But I've taken a little bit of damage here. As you can see by the red, that means one of my units is very badly weakened. So I'm going to press on the healing camp. So now they're going to heal, it shouldn't take too long. Um, yeah, healing camp is up, they all just sit down, they're very vulnerable right now. But you know, they're healed, you saw it turn from red to yellow to green, and they're now healed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replenish them, because you can see they've lost almost half a squad already. So if you're in a village, or near your base, then you can replenish by pressing this button here. As you can see, if they're outside of a village, you cannot replenish them. They've got to be either in a village or near a base. Ah, oh, great, the AI is playing smart for once. Okay, so even the easy AI caught me off guard there. I'm uh, just going to quickly recapture this village. As you can see, my shields are up. If you have an option to turn your shields up, I advise that you do it because it gives you... Um, gives you some defensive advantage versus these arrows. As you can see again, the village is shooting at me. This will always happen. Let's just take this village. Right, and now I've taken the village. Nothing is shooting at me, so I can now turn the shields off. And I'm now going to heal my unit, because as you can see, it's orange. He's a little bit weak right now. Let's just heal him. So if I had to talk loud there, it's quite difficult to talk over these dying enemies at times. The village is mine. So now I can replenish my soldiers as I tried to do last time. Just click this button here and as you can see, I'm missing two units right now. And if I press this, it says, as you can see by flashing, it's going to heal it to that point. There we go, cost some resources. but. They get healed. And there we go, we got our full squad back. Now let's talk about the resources at the bottom. First of all, wood. Wood is used to buy units. Um, it's, it's a bit like gold in a way, but it's not gold. Um, 
For example, a swordsman costs 50 wood, 10 stone. A barracks costs 70 wood, 10 stone. Um, a house costs 50 wood, and that's it. Um, so you don't want wood. If you capture the village, then you can work on these resources. So, of course, I've captured this village, and this village provides wood and food. So if I click on the wood logo, um, I train some villagers. And you just gotta wait for it to go up. These villagers are now trained and they go out and they work some wood. And as you can see, I'm now generating more wood per minute. This is like per minute by the way, so that's 60 per minute, 10 stone per minute and all that. Food is very important, especially as the Vikings and the Slavs because they require a lot of food. Um, so what you want, if food gets to zero and it's still going down, because right now I'm minus 10, because I don't have any farms, but I've got units. Um, then your units will start starving, and they'll lose a lot of their morale for it. So, this village also provides food. You want the food, so let's get the food. As you can see, the food is, like, there again. The villagers are coming out of the village, they're working the food, and you'll see... And there we go. You, you've now got food. So you've got four food in reserve, and currently you've got enough farms to supply two units. If you have any more units, you'll be back in negative. If you have any more farms, you'll be going up in the positive. And then there's iron. Iron is a little bit like wood, but not as essential. You can use iron to buy, um, to buy some units, but it's mostly for armor and technologies. Shield, listen! Okay, I think it's time now to take another village. So I'm going to head for village C, I think. But because the AI might do what they did last time and try and take this village, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some defences. Um, I These are towers here. Uh, they're very expensive and I don't advise towers, um, especially in the early game. But this one here... This little orange symbol, that's good. That gives your village some defences. Um, I think it... I, I, I don't know the exact statistics, so I'm not, not going to say what those could be. Okay, let's take a look at these technologies. So, this is... This is kind of similar to Age of Empires. You have your Age Up thing. So, like, level 2 and level 3. I'm right now in level 1, and I want to go to level 2. And this costs 100 wood, 20 stone. I've got enough resources. As you can see, it's glowing orange, so I've got enough resources. And I'll click it. Leveling up allows you access to more buildings, such as, uh, for example, the archery range requires level 2. Um, the blacksmith requires level 3. It also gives you more units as well, like the spearman. That requires level 2, but the swordsman you can train any time. Now that I'm in level 2, you can see I can get the, the Spearman and build the archery range. And it also gives access to technologies and stuff. Warband. And it also provides some extra resources as well. Um, because I'm now in level 2, I get, I get a little bit of extra resources. And as you can see here, I'm now in positive food, which is definitely Warband. good. Burn it down. Time to take this village. So this is a silver village. Uh, silver villages are stronger than bronze villages for, you know, they're like second level sort of thing. Um, you can tell the strength of the village by looking at the top, so this is bronze right now, and this here is silver. Remember when playing as the Slavs to use shield formation when taking villages. They provide extra defense versus archers. Okay. I've taken the village. I'm going to turn on my torches because it's a little bit dark and I want to take a little look. Right, as you can see, I've taken a few... I've taken I've taken a bit of damage again, so I'm going to heal them. Okay, they're attacking my base. Right, if you press M, or this red button here, this rings the emergency on your village. It calls an alarm and all your peasants rush into the village and they shoot out at the enemy. So always make sure you've got soldiers. Um, now always make sure that you remember to press 
this red button here when the enemy attacks your village for the extra defences. Right, they actually took the village, I was a little bit slow there. Um, but that should be fine. Let's just rush in and let's get them killed. Now because I outnumbered them I of course won that fight there and they're retreating. So let's retake this village here and yeah got another unit coming in as well. Remember to heal your units and let's just capture that. Okay this village we took um, a couple of minutes ago but I got a little bit distracted. So what I need right now is food because it's going down so food is what I'm going to go for first. And then I'm going to have some wood as well and some iron. Right, these units took a bit of damage so I'm going to replenish them. There we go. And also I can work for food and the wood of this. So I'm producing a lot of resources now compared to what I started with at the game. I'm also three out of three units, so I'm going to build. I'm going to build a house to be able to recruit an, a fourth unit. I've got three swordsmen right now. The problem: three swordsmen are good, but they could be better. With these technologies here, you can you can improve your swordsmen. So a, a lot like in Age of Empires sort of thing, you, you can just. Uh, you can buy technologies for specific units that makes them stronger. And as you can see there, and now they do have um, an attack advantage. I'm going to try and take middle. Oh, they're coming here. Right, so, click the red button, and I'm going to give them extra defensive as well. And I've got some units r rushing over here as well. Gold village is of course the highest level of village, as I said there's bronze, um, that will turn bronze eventually, silver and gold is the highest. As you can see this village uh, with defences and uh, the red alarm run, it, it does quite a lot of damage, we took out almost one unit and they're having to retreat now and it's brought us time to send in some reinforcements. And my village is still shooting at them as well, which is always good to see. Right, I'm going to heal my units. And now that they've left, this village seems safe, so always remember to turn the alarm off. Because when the alarm's on, the defences are better, but you're not gathering resources. So turn the alarm off when you think it's safe, and they go back to collect resources. Um, of course, if this was an actual game, I will be playing much faster pace than this and doing a lot of stuff at once, but because it's a tutorial, I'm trying to take it slower to help you. Now, I've got a feeling they're going to come for this base again. Maybe they won't, maybe they will, but I'm going to go and place a trap. Because it's always fun to place a good trap. Right, traps are important because they're invisible and they kill units. There's two types of traps in this game. There's the muddy pit trap, which uh, slows the enemy down, it causes some damage on them, and it stops them from being able to retreat. So that's very good for ambushing an enemy. That's yeah, that's a very tactical trap. It's yeah, you probably won't want to use too many of those when you start the game. But these these spike pit traps, they're good. Traps cost wood and they're usually quite cheap. So I'm going to build one here. Ooh, what are they doing? Right, I want to see what happens here. So as you can see this enemy here is moving towards a trap. He cannot see this trap um, right now. There is a way how to see traps, I'll go into that later, but as you can see, he's walking. 
And there we go. They walked into the trap. We got hit. Traps low and morale as well. I charge in. And they die. So that's the effectiveness of traps. How do you counter traps? Well, you've got to put a unit in defensive formation. Defensive formation is here. If you have a unit in defensive formation, then in all their zone of control that they can see, they provide like a, a super defensive sort of thing. They can spot traps and they can also see... Um, and also they fight better against units when in defensive formation. But of course you move slow, so you can't move in defensive formation around the entire map. Okay, so they're attacking this village now. Oh, but I've run out of food. The yellow bar, no, the white bar at the top of the unit, that shows their morale. If the morale is high, that's good. If it's low, that's bad. Mine is very low right now because my units are starving. And now that my food is back up to positive again, the mo you can see that the bar has returned to normal. Uh, this was actually starting to go down. So when you're starving, you, your morale bar goes down, but when you've got food, it goes back up again. I think this village is enough safe, so time to press forward with my soldiers. Okay, so they've taken this village here. Oh, but I've got some units, so I'm going to put my units in defensive formation. And look at what defensive formation does. It gets you a few extra hits, which is always good. And then his morale, as you can see, is very low right now. If I move in with a flank, then it goes even lower. And then he's got no morale, that means he fights like terrible and he retreats. Keep your distance! Burn it to the ground! Retreat! Uh, this village is now safe, so I can turn on this again. And I can get the food back. Remember to put shields up when attacking a village. I also want to enter age 3 as well, and I can afford it, so yeah, I might as well. Gives me a few extra resources and access to other technologies. Right, got my squad to heal here. I don't know what all that was about. <laughs> I'm going to move this unit round here to help defend this village. And then you collect resources as always. Again, I'm going to place another trap here. Um, because I think the AI is going to try and attack me from this angle. So I might as well place a trap. And yeah. then I should hopefully be able to catch him. Now, I've got a lot of spare iron. But I'd, eh, I've got... might as well use it. So I'm going to purchase some armour. This orange icon here is the armour symbol, and as you can see, they're putting on the armour. That's the blue bar above that. Armour, you know, it provides extra defence. I don't need to explain what armour is. And you can see it's now silver armour. Um, I think they actually look different as well. Yeah, they do look slightly different, as you can tell with some units. Let's give them a bit more armour, so that we go up to gold armour, which is the maximum level of armour that they can get. So this is, this is no armor, this will be gold armor. You can see it's got a gold icon, and they do look slightly different. Yeah, you can actually see the armor on the unit, which is always good to see. Armor gives you defensive bonuses, but it also slows your units down. So as you can see, those two are going to run, but the one without armor will get there first. So, got to be careful of that. Might as well, like they're attacking. So I run the alarm of the village and I use my unit in defensive formation to try and help defend it a little bit. 
I'm going to give this village some defences as well, just in case if they use defensive formation, spot this trap, break through, might as well have some defences here. Yeah, as you can see, the unit without armour is getting there much quicker. This village is now safe, so I'm going to release the peasants, let them get back to work, and heal this unit. Right, if you want more technologies, for most of the technologies you require a blacksmith's. So I'm going to build one of those. Now you can see like all other buildings, it's in its pre-allocated location. Oh, and I caught one with a trap. Good. Still best ring the alarm just in case. And let's train another unit as well. Burn it to the ground. Let's try and take this village. A bronze village you need one unit for, such as this. Um, a silver village, such as this, you need two units for. And a gold village, like this one, you need three units for. Usually. It, it depends, of course, on if you've got armor or not, but that's that's usually how it, how it goes. So, this unit needs healing, and this unit needs replenishing. There you can tell, because he's taken a hit, his green is a bit more yellow, and this one has a unit that's completely dead, so replenish that one and heal that one. And get the all the resources gathered. I think this village is safe now. So I'm gonna release the villagers. And I'm gonna give this unit some armor. I'm also going to use this unit to turn on his torches so that it can have a much better view of what's actually going on down here. New equipment has arrived. Right, now that I've built my blacksmiths, as you can see by the little tick there, um, I can now get technologies. Hold on. So I got the flank there, so that really helps a lot. My gold army unit as well can hold out against almost anything that I can possibly send against us. We took a few hits, so it's always good to pull back and replenish and heal. Yeah, so now that I've built my blacksmiths, I can now get these technologies. Um, this one here, uh, the tough lame... lame lay? I can't read what that says. Um, all squads defensive slightly increased. Okay, and this one here, prosperity. Income slightly increased. You know what, I'll go off of the extra defense. That costs 100 iron, which is actually quite expensive, more expensive than it's probably worth, but whatever, I'll go off of it. And once this technology is researched, my units will have better defense. Now, this... This unit has got a promotion, as you can see here. This unit doesn't have it. This unit doesn't have it. Um, hold on. But this unit here, it does. As you can see by this little triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it its promotion. And this is how you specialise your units. So you click on its promotion, and you can choose whether you want this unit to specialise in defence, Offense or speed. I personally prefer offensive, um, but it's up to you. Some units, such as archers, have different ones, such as um, accuracy, piercing, and speed. Um, yeah, so it's different for all units. It's just up to you. Oh no, I'm in healing formation now because I had to heal, but they've actually come with another unit, so this could look quite bad. Because I'm in the healing formation, we're, we don't have a defensive up, and we're going to take quite a big hit. As you can see, we've got a lot of units that have taken damage already. Alright, build another house. Right, I think they're going to win this battle here, um, so I'm going to pull back by pressing the retreat button. And I'm going to have to ring the alarm as well. Yeah, they're coming up for this village. So let's retreat them, and we're going to retreat as close to the base as possible. 
um, but without going all the way back to the base. So now they've stopped retreating, uh, and I'm going to bring them up here uh, to like heal. Because I can heal down here, but I cannot replenish because I've got to be near a village to be able to replenish. I've built my fifth house, so I can now get another unit. And I'm going to build a stable as well. So yeah, there's going to be my stable. Let's set a rally location to here. Uh, actually, let's say all the way to here. Right, this unit's made it, so let's just heal him and replenish him. We've got a new unit out, so let's send him all the way to sea to try and help over here and give him some armor as well. Seeing as I've got so many resources, I might as well build a couple of houses. Might get some cavalry out as well. We've got a new gear. Road warrior. Uh, I think these units are ready to push, so I'm going to push them over here to take this village. As you can see on the minimap, my they've just taken C, and I'm bringing in some units to try and reclaim it, and I'm sending some units to try and take D. This is where their base is. Okay, they've spotted me, so I'm going to go into this forest here. Ah, uh, they didn't see me. Well, um, uh, they're caught up to me is what I was meant to say. This, these types of bushes here, these provide a defensive um, boost because it makes you um, invisible to enemy units if you're in this bush. Um, it's difficult to explain, it's like, um, it's like in Total War for example. Um, let, let's use a Tiller Total War. Um, you have um, like trees of course on the map and there's like a fog of war. If a unit is in the tree, you cannot see the unit until you send a unit in those trees also and reveal it to your own like fog of war sort of thing. If that makes sense. So right now because I'm in the bush and they have no units in the bush to see me, they can't see me, they don't know I'm here. So I'm going to press this button here, might as well heal. They don't, well they might remember I'm here but it's the AI, the AI is stupid. And now I can heal. They took a lot of damage there but they didn't get too many kills on me which I was lucky with. Alright. Time to take this village. I'm a little bit worried though that they might have placed a trap here. So I'm going to put my soldiers in defensive forma formation as I move forward. And no, they're in defensive formation now and I can't see any traps so I think it's safe to push forward. They have actually noticed me so I'm just going to finish off this unit. There we go. Right, I can see them here but they can't see me because I'm in this forest a bit here, so I'm going to send my cav. Where are they? There they are, let's just charge them. Cavalry are very good against swordsmen. When they do actually charge. There we go, they charged in, let's get some swordsmen in there as well. And they just didn't stand a chance. Let's move my units up here. Right, put my torches on because it's dark. And, ooh, there's another one. Right, so as you can see, this is a farm. My enemy right now is farming this food here. Um, and I could attack the village and destroy the village. But I could also, if I want to cut off the food, I can just attack the food. And it's sort of like a Viking raid sort of thing, where you just cut the peasants, and now this village is providing the wood, it's providing the stone, but it's not providing the food because I killed the civilians around it. Right, let's take this village now. Remember to be in defensive formation. And the same over here as well. Uh, send him a cab as well just to speed it up. Right, so they've rung the bell, and that's why it went up to bronze and then silver defensive, and now gold defense. So, uh, yeah. 
this village got very strong very fast, but luckily I've got three units here. And I've already done a, done a little bit of damage, and we've got a bit of armor on, so we should be fine to take that. And this one we should be able to take easily. Because they haven't run the defenses. That's a big mistake by them there. We'll capture this one. We heal our units, we replenish, we collect the resources. And then we capture this one. Um, once they leave, there we go. Yeah, if there's another enemy in the zone, um, then you can't capture it because it's it's like it's contested, so it just pauses where it is, and that's how it works. So I can heal, I can replenish, and then I collect resources. And then I'm going to put some defenses as well. I forgot to do that. Replacements arrived. Chill. Attention. Get ready. Right, best ring the bell for security. Is up. Not so chill. Not that warrior. Heal and replenish, and I think these units have this village is fine, so I'm going to release the alarm and collect resources again. Right now, this unit here is not fully healed yet, but whatever, I just want to reassure you this again. This unit has another. Well, let's bring him down here so it's a bit quieter. This unit has a promotion here again, like the other one that we saw earlier. I'm going to give this one speed instead. So this unit now runs faster than the other units. And just heal him, him there. They've stopped attacking so I can release the villagers. Okay, now as you can see the score here is very heavily ticking in my favour. Uh, this is the domination score. Um, basically what this means is once they're out of... I, I like to see it as... Um, oh, it's actually ticking too fast, can't explain it in time. Um, I like to see it like um, one of us... Um, One of those sand turner sort of thing, where you got an amount of sand um, in like a glass, and then when you turn it upside down, the sand trickles down to the bottom. It's like that. Once one side is out of sand, that's it. They lose. Um, I, actually, I won that game, even though it said draw. That was just um, fighting the air might be a little bit bugged. I don't know. I think we rarely do it. But yeah. To win a domination match, which that was, probably should have explained this earlier, you want to capture villages. You can win by destroying the enemy's base, um, but you can also win by capturing villages and holding those villages for a longer amount of time than the enemy does. Um, if you have three villages and they have two villi villages, you will gain one point per second. And you need to be like, I think, 1,500 points or something, depending on what the exact rules of the match are. Um, if you have five villages and they have zero, then you go up five points a second. Or, like, two seconds. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's about that. Uh, that's how domination works. Um, it, it's, it's just something that you need to get used to, domination scores. Uh, like everything else in this game, um, I've got a few more things to say. First of all, this game works as a rock, paper, scissors sort of thing. You'll see something on screen now, where it shows you what unit beat what unit. Um, it doesn't include archers, and it doesn't include um, doesn't include cavalry. I just want to show you for the melee units. So as you can see, the spearman is like the rock. The spear no, never mind. The spearman beat the axeman. The Axeman beats the Swordsman, and the Swordsman beat the Spearman. And it's like that rock, paper, scissors sort of thing, that, that triangle, that one thing beats another. There's also cavalry and archers and siege equipment involved. Um, yeah, you, you, you'll get used to what those are, but that's the basics. 
like the rock, paper, scissors sort of thing. But just because a swordsman beats a spearman does not mean a swordsman will beat a spearman every single time. If the spearman has an upgrade, uh, like in the technology part, and if the spearman has armour, then the spearman could beat the swordsman. If the swordsman has low morale, then the spearman could beat the swordsman again. And it's like that, so just because you've got the better unit, you've got to make sure you've got the morale, you've got to make sure you've got the armour and the technology. And don't get flanked as well, flanking causes loads of problems for your tr troops. Okay, so now you've watched this video and I'm going to assume that you haven't played this game yet. Or you might have played a couple of goes, I don't know. Anyway, this is what I advise you to do right now. So you've watched this video, you're still a level 1, I'm a level 34 by the way, but you're still a level 1, uh, you haven't really played, you might have given the campaign a go. I advise that you do this Viking campaign here. This is the tutorial campaign, and once you complete this you get access to the other campaigns. Um, these two campaigns are coming soon, they'll be like, if I remember correctly, they're free LC, so they'll be free in like a couple of months or however long it takes them to release it. Um, but yeah, then there's these other campaigns. Do this tutorial one first, and yeah, get used to this before you go into the multiplayer on, of course, easy difficulty or medium, whatever you want, to, whatever you want to choose, your choice. Yeah, this should this should basically go through everything what I've said. But if you play it into your own practice, then it does really help. Now, if you want to get used to the multiplayer, the problem is. A lot of people will see your score and see you as a level 1 who doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, I know it's mean but whatever and you will get kicked from a lot of lobbies. So what you want to do is you want to, let's search for some games so there's actually no one playing right now, great. Uh, just my luck. Um, let's say there's just a normal match that's a 3 versus 3. By all means try and join that one but you might get kicked from it because these people will be higher levels and first of all they they don't want to be on your team because they'll they don't want to lose because you know you're a level one you haven't proven yourself yet you need to prove your statistics like I have um, and also they don't want to fight against you because that's just too easy and that will be a waste of their time so if you see a lobby open that says like uh, level ones or something or yeah something like that join those if you want to. If you can't find any games and you want to host a game, um, then I advise you to title it something like um, New Players or something like that. Why do I always type players on? New Players or um, Low Level. J just title it something like that. So that you get people that are your level coming in, people who are also inexperienced. Uh, you can do like stuff with this level bracket as well, which I, I can't actually show you because my level's too high, it doesn't let me use anymore uh, the way it, how it's meant to be used, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I advise if you, this is if this is your first game online to play a few like this, just call yourself a low level player in the title um, or put like noob friendly or whatever, all welcome, whatever title you want to go for. Um, and then people, people of your level will join, you can learn with them, you can make friends with them and I advise you to get if you've got any friends on this game as well I advise you to bring them on and, and fight together rank up together get some scores and then people will accept you into their lobbies like for the bigger names such as the level 20s or level 30s otherwise you, you will get kicked a lot if you're only level 1 so uh, this is like my warning to you so that's something you should expect um, so yeah, try and try and get into some low level games first with some players that you might know, or just title it in a certain way that brings low players in, um, who I've also as inexperienced. You can also fight against the AI like I have just done here. Um, to fight against the AI on these battle maps, uh, you can load a skirmish, and you choose your map. Um, you can change your settings to however you want. You create the game. I advise if it's your first game that you choose easy, but you can choose whatever you want, um, of course. And then you enter yourself in here, and then you can choose your faction as well. Choose the enemy faction, and you can just experiment. Fighting against the AI does not rank up your profile. So, um, it, it's good for a little bit of practice at the start, but it's it's not going to um, 
it's, yeah, you're not going to get ranked up for it. I think I've covered everything. If any other good players at Ancestors Legacy want to uh, add something else in the comment section, uh, feel free to do that. Um, if I find any other reviews, I'll link those in the description. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to take all questions. Just comment them below and I'll, I'll try and answer as soon as I can. Um, yeah, and I, I do really recommend this game to most people. The problem is right now, um, a lot of people were level 1s and they lost a lot of games because they, they didn't know how to play and they, they kind of got bored and quit after that and there's not many people in the multiplayer right now because of that reason, because people quit um, when they started losing. That's why I'm doing this tutorial, is to try and get more players back onto this game uh, because it, the game definitely deserves it. Uh, is there anyone on now? Ah, oh, yeah, there's a few lobbies now, so... Um, yeah, they've, they've got their own server names. Um, I won't join. Um, if I was a level... Whatever, you know that. Um, yeah. So there's some games here. These have gone for their own names, like uh, just question marks and stupid things like that. Uh, don't see the point of a having the server title as just question marks, but whatever. Um, look for the games that are very level 1 friendly. That's what you want to do. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. More importantly, I hope you learnt something useful. Um, oh, here's something else you can do as well if you want to uh, rank up a little bit. You can host a game, but you don't have to play against uh, people. You can play against um, player versus AI. So you can choose a 4 versus 4 map, and you can bring in a friend or just wait for someone of your level to join, and you can fight against an easy AI. Um, as you can see here, it preload. It, 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 yeah. Alright, so you can load yourself in, and you can load the AI in as well, and you can also invite a friend, or you can add the AI to fight with. I don't think this ranks you up. I, I don't know. I, 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 sh I should check for it. Um, yeah, but this is also good for practice as well, and if you can get a rank up by fighting against the AI this way, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, um, yeah, just practice is what it needs, and by practicing you've got to find people of your own level. As you get higher levels, you will also start kicking level 1s, it's it's a natural thing that you, got, that you do. Um, I try not to at times, but sometimes I just got to because it's it's unfair on you to just go into a game that I know that you're just gonna get destroyed in, um, and it's also a waste of my time. So I do kick level ones. Um, yeah, sorry about that, but I've got to. <laughs> um, if you want to uh, have a go trying to one versus one or two versus two um, or whatever, then I'll be happy to do that as well. Just comment below in the comment section, as I said. Best end of this video now, it's been going on for a lot longer than I expected, uh, but I think I covered everything, hope you enjoyed, and goodbye.